Hello, and welcome to another episode of the NBA Ask Aaron Anything podcast. I'm your host, Aaron Herzog. Today's Monday, October 29th, 2018, and I'm back with more answers for your NBA questions. Hope you guys had a great weekend and your week's off to a great start. My week's off to a great start because I got a new batch of questions to answer. And I'm going to have a lot of fun answering them. Thank you guys so much for sending them, mostly via Facebook. You can also send them on Twitter, at Aaron Herzog, hashtag AskAaronNBA. Email them to me, Aaron.Herzog at gmail.com. Email me anything. Email me nice things. Forward me spam, chain letters. I'm happy to get any email that's not just from a company trying to sell me something. Today's question, today's first question, it's a good one, Halloween themed, very spooky, it's the scariest week of the year. What are your Halloween plans? How are you going to get scared? Are you going to watch scary movies? Are you going to go to haunted houses? Are you going to carve jack-o'-lanterns? This question comes from Alana Gethard, and she wants to know about trick-or-treating. She wants to know which NBA player... I would want to go trick-or-treating with, and why, and what would we both dress up as? This is a great question, and it leads me down a lot of different avenues, because it's very specific. Alana is asking what NBA player I would want to go trick-or-treating with most, not what NBA player's Halloween party I want to go to, which would lead me to saying maybe LeBron, or maybe the Oklahoma City Thunder are supposed to have legendary Halloween parties. It's not what NBA player do I want to have a couple's costume with because that would send me to saying Boban, and here's why I would. I'm going to answer all these questions that I'm just coming up with myself. Boban, I would want to go Halloweening with Boban because he's the largest player in the NBA, and I don't get to feel small most, you know? I'm I'm a pretty big guy myself. I'm six foot five, and I think that me and Boban could come up with a great forced perspective costume that would make me look like some kind of little kid because he's so enormous I could feel small for once that's just what I want I lumber around all the time just stomping my feet being big dumb and goofy and now I can hang out with Boban and feel real little tiny maybe I could be a baby and he could wear me in a baby Bjorn and I'm a grown man in a baby Bjorn I would totally do that that would win some costume competitions I would love to be in Boban's Baby Bjorn. Boban's Baby Bjorn, baby. I tickle myself. But that's not what this question is. It's not who would I most want to go on a haunted house with. Uh, Nick Young. He'd be real fun. He'd be screaming. I bet he'd get real into it. He would be screaming... He would think he would think the attractions are real. He would actually get scared of the zombies on like a haunted hayride. This is which NBA player would I most want to go trick or treating with? So here's here's what trick or treating trick or treating is all about: candy. It's all about getting candy from people, and if they don't, tricking them. And people tend to frown on adults trick-or-treating. So my first thought was, okay, maybe I go trick-or-treating with an NBA player who has kids. And uh, maybe I'll pick an NBA player who has a lot of kids. And then we could share the candy and, you know, blah, blah, blah. But that's no fun. Plus, you can't take that much candy because there's there's kids. They're going to want the candy. So the kids are going to get the candy. So I'm not going to pick, you know, Steph Curry. And his cute kids to go trick-or-treating with. I'm not going to pick LeBron with his kids. They're too old anyway. They're they're pushing it. His kid can dunk. He's too old to trick-or-treat. So I got to think of some plan. I got to think of an NBA player that is going to let me get away with trick-or-treating as an adult. So my mind starts to go. And I'm thinking, okay... Who's the smallest player in the NBA? Who can I cover up to make people think that they are a child? 
The shortest player in the NBA right now is Isaiah Thomas, five foot nine. Still kind of tall, but believable enough. I wish Muggsy Bogues was still in the league. Five foot three, perfect. That would be great. If this was who would be my number one choice all time, I would go Muggsy Bogues, five foot three. You can cover his face, cover most of his body. Make sure people don't see he is an elite, world-class athlete and pretend he's a child. I'm going to have to do the same thing with Isaiah Thomas. We're going to have to cover him up head to toe. You can't see that he's muscularly ripped. You also can't have him talk because you're going to hear that it's a man's voice. So we're going to have to go trick-or-treating, cover up Isaiah Thomas, and, and not let him talk. So we could say he's shy. Or, you know, we can we can say that I'm going to dress him up as some character from, from something that's not going to get a whole lot of questions from people. You know, you, you show up as like a, like a Frankenstein or a Dracula. The old people whose houses you're at, they're, they're going to know, they're going to know what you're talking. They're going to know who you are. They're going to ask you lots of questions. They're going to want answers. You show up as some character from Fortnite who's got their face covered completely and their whole body. They don't know who you are. And they're not going to ask questions. And if they do, I'll step in. I'll be like, oh, he's somebody from his favorite video game. He's a little shy. I'm sorry. He's a shy boy. Actually, I'm hiding the fact that he has a man's voice. And he is a man underneath that costume. And then they won't ask many follow-up questions. Because the old people's how they're not going to care about Fortnite. And be like, oh, it's from his favorite video game. He just won't stop playing. Oh, the kids, they're on their video games. Oh, tell me about it. I could barely get him out of the house to go trick-or-treating. He wanted to stay in and, and play the video game. And I was like, why don't you just dress up? We'll go around. We'll we'll get the candy. It'll be fun. And he was like, no, I just want to sit here playing Fortnite. And I was like, but I got you this cool Fortnite costume. Uh-huh. It's the only way I can get him out of the house. If he can cosplay. He calls it cosplaying. He doesn't even call it dressing up for Halloween. He calls it costume playing I hate my kid I'd say that to somebody maybe they give me some candy I hate my child my son is a disappointment because all he wants to do is sit in front of the TV and play Fortnite and the only way I can get him out of the house is if I get a custom made expensive costume So that he can pretend to be his Fortnite players. Really, it's Isaiah Thomas. All five foot nine of them. Be like, hey, you got a tall kid there. And I'll be like, hey, he runs in the family. I'm 6'5". My father is 6'9". Look at this kid. He's only 10. He's already five foot nine. He is definitely not a grown man making millions of dollars playing for the Denver Nuggets. He's definitely not a guy who was one of the best players in the NBA two years ago Who before he, he hurt himself and cost himself even more money. He's definitely not a guy who's going to want to eat all this candy because he doesn't want to put anything inside of his body that's going to ruin it, ruin his chances of rebuilding himself to that player again. So guess who gets all the candy? Me. That's right, Alana. I go trick-or-treating with Isaiah Thomas. He is dressed in costume as Fortnite Boy. I am dressed in costume as said Fortnite Boy's disappointed father. That's the costume. I'm playing a role. I'm playing a character. Isaiah doesn't want any of this candy. I get it all. Happy Halloween to me. That is the ultimate NBA player to go. And here's the thing. I... I I bet if we don't get candy, he could pull off some mean tricks, too. He's fast. So he can he can do something and run away real quick. You know, he could TP a house and be out of there and way faster than I could. He won't trip over his feet while trying to run away. He's accurate with passes. 
so we can egg a house, hit it exactly where he wants. If we're not getting candy, if people are like, your kid's a little, if people think something's up, so they're like, he's five foot nine. He's too tall to be trick or treating. I'm like, he's ten years old. It just, we're a tall family. He's very shy. That's why he's not talking. And they're like, I think there's a grown man under there. I'd be like, I don't know why you would expect, why why you would expect there to be a grown man under this Fortnite costume. But he's not. I'm not taking his mask off. Why do you want to see this child's face? What are you, a creep? And I'll be like, well, you're not getting candy if you don't show me your little boy's pretty little face. And I'll be like, you're definitely a creep now. Definitely a creep. So then we go away, and we come back. And we've got toilet paper. We've got eggs. We've got maybe bags of dog poop that we're going to line on fire. Isaiah's in and out like a flash. Ultimate Halloween partner. That's my answer, Alana. Thank you so much for your question. It's a great one. It's a real, real great one. I'm going to answer one more question today because it's kind of on topic. It's from Ryan Shaner. <laughs> and he's asking an honest question. How do I know that? Because he starts it with honestly, man. And that's how you know somebody is, is really wanting to, to know. You know, he's not goofing around he's not asking something silly he really wants to know he says honestly man what the hell is a low post presence and does it have anything to do with Muggsy Bogues since I already mentioned Muggsy on today's show I gotta tell you Shaner it's got nothing to do with Muggsy not much to do with Muggsy at all are you thinking that because he's short and because he plays low to the ground because he has to it's a pretty good guess but no, the low post, Ryan, read a book. Just go to Google. No, it's the area around the basket, okay? It's where the traditional big men play. You know, the guys, like, think Shaq, you know? You may know him as a rapping genie. You may know him as the guy selling icy hot patches. You may know him as the guy from TNT goofing around with Charles Barkley. No, he was a low post player, traditional center. You play down low, you bang with the big boys, you expend the energy. They say the game's going they say the low post game is going away. It's a lost art. There are no more big men banging down low like they used to. It's all three pointers now. They say the game's losing those low post presents and it might be. But they'll come back. It's gonna it it always swings both ways. So that's that's what a low post presence is. A player with a, a strong low post presence would be a player like Shaq. A player opposite of Muggsy Bogues. He would not have a very strong low post presence because he's a little guy. He would be more of a perimeter player. So it's the guys who, you know, they get the ball, they clunk it around. They dribble with the back to the basket. They fake a spin one way, fake a, fake go another way. It's how big dumb idiots like me play basketball. That's what a low post presence is, Ryan. If you ask anyone who may have played basketball with me how I play, they'll be like, he's a, he's a bit of a low post presence. It means I'm a big dumb idiot. And I just slam around and... Uh, try to not get knocked over. And there's no grace. <laughs> there's no beauty. I mean, at least in my... If you want to see a graceful, beautiful, low-post game, look for Hakeem Olajuwon highlights. They don't call that guy the dream for nothing. And it's not because he slept a lot. It's not because he... It's not because he was... Uh, it's not because he was... Always thinking about stuff. His head was in the in the clouds. No, it's because he moved like a dream. Low post presence. Guys who play well around the basket. Typically not ball handlers. Typically get the ball passed into them. This is a basketball lesson for Ryan Shaner. 
Guys, that's a podcast for today. Now you know what a low post presence is, and you know how to get away with trick-or-treating with an NBA basketball player. Thank you guys so much for your questions. I've got some more for this week. Got a few more episodes in me, but keep sending them. Keep sending questions. Keep rating the podcast. Or start rating the podcast, I should really say. Because that'll help. That'll help more people listen to it, and we'll get more questions outside of the same few people who've been asking them, who I really appreciate it. But we'll diversify, you know? That's the show for today. Thank you guys so much for listening. I really appreciate it. And we'll see you later this week.